Hello friends, this is Benjamin from English Classes Online. You are welcome to today's video. Today we are looking at answering questions on idiomatic expressions in the West African Senior School Certificate Examinations and the National Examinations Council Senior School Certificate Examinations. We want to look at how questions on idiomatic expressions can be answered. We want to look at ways of interpreting idioms correctly in order to win maximum marks in this section of the exam. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video on this channel, you will be instantly notified and you will have free access to all the videos I upload on this channel. Let's get started with the topic right away. Um, we shall be looking at the questions on the WASC of June 2009. But before we get into that, let's familiarize ourselves with what an idiom is and how we can interpret idioms. What is an idiom? An idiom is a group of words that has a special meaning that is different from the ordinary meaning of each separate word. For example, to let the cat out of the bag has nothing to do with a cat or a bag. It simply means to tell someone a secret, especially without intending to. How to interpret idioms? Since idioms usually mean something different from what the words mean, how can we find out their meanings? We can figure out the meaning of an idiom by examining the elements that make up the idiom and the mental pictures they create in our minds. To do this, we need some literary devices. One, metaphors. Two, imagery or images. And three, symbolism. Now, metaphors, uh, a metaphor directly refers to one thing by mentioning another. A metaphor states that one thing is another thing. Examples are as follows. Jack is the black sheep of the family. You see, the black sheep of the family. Say, Jack is. That's what metaphor normally does. And uh, what do we find out here? The black sheep of the family is usually a disgrace, a failure, or an embarrassment to the family. So we use a combination of metaphors. I mean a combination of metaphor, imagery, and symbolism in interpreting the idiom. Because here, uh, Jack is the black sheep of the family. Now, a black sheep also creates a mental image uh, in you. Uh, black and sheep that actually paints a negative image in our mind. And so the meaning is that Jack is a disgrace, a failure, or an embarrassment to the family. Now the second example, Udo is a snake in the grass. Again, this is metaphor. Uh, a snake in the grass is used in describing Udo. Uh, it does not really mean that U Udo is a snake, literally. Uh, that we can find in the grass but at least what picture does it paint in our mind it means someone who cannot be trusted because a snake in the grass is something dangerous something you cannot predict how it is going to react so that's exactly the picture it paints in our mind and so we use a, a, a combination of these devices uh, to try to interpret an idiom. Now let's look at the use of imagery or images. Now, imagery itself 
is the use of words to describe ideas or actions. That's exactly what it is. So an image is the mental picture you have about what has been said, heard, seen, touched, or smelled. I mean, so words that are used to appeal to your senses, you know, your, your, your sense of sight, your sense of hearing, your sense of touch, the, your sense of smell. You know, words that are used and they create images in your mind that these images will help you to interpret certain English idioms. Now, for example, who the most plants cannot, uh, let me take it again, who the most plants amount to building castles in the air. So again, you you, ha you there is a clear image created in your mind you can see the image of someone building castles in the air and what readily comes to your mind is that it's, it's impossible how can you build castles in the air you know so here building castles in the air is used to refer to an unrealizable plan an impossible uh, ambition that's what the kind of picture it creates in our mind and that is exactly what the idiom uh, is pointing uh, at the second example lucy dropped the bombshell at last she was hiv positive you see here the bombshell is not about a bomb is an unexpected piece of news you know so uh, lucy dropped the bombshell at last she said she was hiv positive that's the the bombshell and you know a bomb is something you are not expecting so it's an unexpected piece of uh, of of news so that's exactly the way it is So the next uh, literary device is known as symbolism, you know. Symbolism is the use of symbols to represent ideas or qualities. Certain things are symbols for certain ideas or qualities. Examples, Buster went through fire in the man's house, you know. Fire is always a symbol of suffering or pains or difficulties. It simply means that bosses suffered or experienced difficulties in the man's house. Second example, the government has offered an olive branch to the opposition. You know, an olive branch is always a sign of making peace, you know, with your, with your rival or your enemy. Uh, in, in the... Uh, when nations go to war with other nations, uh, you know, uh, an olive branch is always, when an olive branch is extended, it, it means it's a sign of ceasefire, or so to speak. So the government has offered an olive branch to the opposition. It means they've taken steps to end the conflict or to make peace. Now let's look at other examples of symbols. A crown stands for royalty. A cross refers to suffering. A serpent refers to evil or deceit. While a rose, that is the flower, stands for beauty. You know, so these are, uh, you know, these are clues that will help you to try to interpret uh, idioms. Now, having looked at this, let's now go back to the questions. And uh, we are taking a question from uh, June, I mean, WASC of June 2009, English language. Now, section three. After each of the following sentences, a list of possible interpretations is given. Choose the interpretation that you consider most appropriate for each sentence. Question 21. The accused was caught red-handed by the police. Of course, you know, red is always a symbol of something uh, bad or dangerous. 
All right, but in some cases, it could refer to something uh, noble, like, such as the red uh, carpet, you know. But in this case, let's look at what it means. The accused was caught red-handed by the police. This means that the accused was a made to wear the uh, to wear the red gloves. No, thought to be in danger. No, found in the very act. That is, if you are caught red-handed, you are found in the very act. Found covered with blood. No. Number 22, the greatest problem of the leader is that he can see no further than his nose. Of course, you see that this creates a mental picture. Your nose is very close to your eyes. And so if that is how far you can see, it means something is wrong with your, your ability to, to see uh, into the future. This means that the leader lacks foresight. That's exactly what it means. You know, other options are eliminated. Has bad sight? No, it's not literal. Uh, is easily deceived? No. Has no self-confidence? No. When you cannot see beyond your nose, it means you lack foresight. Number 23. He left the country to avoid loss of face. If you lose your face, it means you get into shame or humiliation you know when people try to hide their face you tell people to hide their face in shame you know hiding your face is a sign of shame this means that he left the country a eh, to make his fortune somewhere else no to seek revenge no to seek refuge no avoid being publicly humiliated that's quite correct Number 24, John was not really angry with Janet, but, uh, but she seems to have taken the matter very much to heart. If you take the matter to heart, you know, you, uh, you become worried or upset by it. This means that Janet does not like him, no, is very upset about the matter. That's quite correct. She has taken the matter very lightly, no has had a serious talk with him no you know if you take a matter to heart you are upset about the matter number 25 his driving made my hair stand on end on end when your hair stand on end you are you are frightened you are horrified you are very much afraid this means that his driving was delightful no was frightening yes Interesting, no. Exciting, no. All right, so let's look at uh, other questions. Question 26. When the riot broke out in the school, only the principal kept his head. If you keep your head, it means you remain calm in the face of challenges. This means that only the principal was not injured, no. Uh, held his head high, no. Remained calm, yes. Hid himself, no. Question 27. Grace failed mathematics last year, but she has promised to turn over a new leaf this year. When you turn over a new leaf, it means you change your attitude, you change your behavior. This means that this year, Grace will be more vigilant, no. Will work harder, yes. We cling to her books, no. Examine both sides of a leaf, no. Now, question 28. The woman supported her husband through the thick and thin. If you support someone through the thick and thin, it means that in all circumstances, good or bad, this means that she supported her husband in both good and bad health. No, it doesn't refer only to help, health in all circumstances. Be when he was fat and when he got thin. No, when he was behaving well or badly. No, in both good and bad circumstances. That's the correct answer. 29. Jumal thinks she is always right. But I am determined to catch her out. When you catch someone out, you want to prove that the person has done something wrong or that the person uh, has made a mistake. 
This means that I am determined, eh? I am determined to A, arrest her, no, B, confront her, no, C, prove that she can make a mistake, yes. D, make her agree that I am right, no. Question 30. The preacher advised those who lost their property in the fire, in the fire disaster, not to lose hope as every cloud has a silver lining. You know, uh, this means that you know, a silver lining uh, and cloud. A cloud is something that, you know, is cloudy. As you can't see any good thing. But when you see a silver lining, it means some, a sign of good thing. All, all right. So let's see it. If you can see a, a something good out of something, uh, something positive out of something negative, I think that is what is pointing at. This means that A, there is a good side to all misfortunes, yes. B, when there is life, there is hope, no. C, to lose is a common occurrence, no. D, everybody must counter misfortune in life, no. You know, when you, when you say there is, a, you know, a silver lining, that every cloud has a silver lining, it means that uh, there is always uh, something good coming out of every uh, misfortune. So that's exactly how it has been uh, in today's video. We have been looking at uh, answering questions on idiomatic expressions in the West African Senior School Certificate Examinations and the National uh, Examinations Council Senior uh, school certificate examination. Uh, I hope you learned something from today's video. If you enjoyed the video, uh, kindly subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so you will have access to all videos that we regularly upload on this channel. Thank you for watching today's video. See you in the next video and bye bye for now.